Welcome, everybody. We are so happy that you could join us again this evening. You are with Dr. Lucy Barbera and Councillor Lena Messina and myself. This is the last episode of I Figli della Roda, I Befrodrofi, Foundlings, the Orphans of Sicily. And in this last episode, we want to honour each and every one of them. We all have our candles. We've all got a beautiful candle out there and we want to honour them. We want to, um, in the airwaves out there, in going transpiring through, through the energy out in the universe, to say thank you. We are sorry for everything that you had to go through. We cannot even imagine um, the hardship and the pain that you would have to suffer as human beings, um, why none of us can answer. We can only wait for when it's time, God's timing, that he gives us the answers. But in that, I also want to say thank you to Dr. Lucy Barbera because she was their voice and she gave us so much knowledge and information and there's so much more there. For If you've got anyone that you know, let us know. Write down a note. Let us know. We would we'd be very happy to um, honour them as well. So um, Giuseppe Mazzola. So today we actually honour, we're putting a name to a man who came to Australia and who was lean. No, he, he stayed. He came at the end of his life. So, yeah, at the end of his yeah. life he came. He so, came to Australia. He travelled. And, you know, we don't know what these people would have gone through mentally. Mentally, can you imagine being orphaned and, and, and let go? And you never know. We, we're a whole even life today. We search for our own identity. Our number one question as we all growing is who am I? Who, who, who am I? Well, who am I? Who am I? But these people were, were, were left. So, Lena? Um, first of all, I want to say thank you to Lucia and Carmela for sharing this journey with me. Um, I didn't understand very much what Fili de la Rota meant and all I know is the children of the wheel. I knew nothing about what that represented and I um, wanted to say to you that exploring this journey and the stories of what really was under the layers and behind the scenes of what was really happening has really opened up my heart and understand more about some of the survival and the and the basic knowledge and their fight for life back then. I've got three candles here in front of me. Um, the very first candle is acknowledging, well, the last one I want to, um, the larger one, I want to acknowledge all the mothers or the fathers of the children that had to let go their children, whether it was because of poverty or whether it was because of um, nobility, Got that got them pregnant or whatever the situation is, I want to acknowledge all their sacrifices um, and their tears and their sadness um, and their despair of giving up their child. So I want to acknowledge them. I want to acknowledge the wet nurses that um, helped these children come to life and the system that supported them during that time. The next candle of lit, and, of lit is for the children. Um, whether they survived, whether they didn't, it's their stories that are important and we want to acknowledge them that every breath that they took and every feeling they felt, whether it was for a day, whether it was for a year, whether it was for a lifetime, that their stories are worthy and their sacrifices um, and we hope that they're born into a, part, a new life where they didn't have to go through those struggles. And I and I'm, want to honour their souls and hopefully that they have found peace for their path that was given to them during that particular journey. Um, the next candle I've lit is for my nonno, Giuseppe Mazzola. I didn't know very much about my nonno. All I know is that my nonna died when she was 63 and I was at school in Preston and I remember being on the train and crying because my nonna had died and I didn't know him. My nonna had died and I didn't know my nonna very much, but I know that my nonna came here. 
My nonno was a farmer who married my nonna Angelina, who um, was born of nobility. So my nonna was very wealthy. She was um, fortunate enough to go from Sicily to New York and she was treated badly by the Americans. So her and her family came back to Sicily. And then she met my nonna and they got married. My nonna was a very simple woman, I've been told. So simple that she had um, 14 children and my two eldest aunts and my mother were the only ones surviving. The fourth one being my uncle and I, he died, I think between six or eight years old, somewhere about that time. My nonna would go and work, my nonna would go and work in the fields and come back and um, my nonna didn't even prepare dinner. She didn't know that she needed to prepare dinner. And <laughs> I'm wondering whether she was so distraught or going through so much depression because she gave birth to 14 children. Now, I knew my nonna, um, and I'm sorry to discuss this, but I need to tell you the truth. My nonna was a womanizer. My nonna um, um, spent all my nonna's money on women, all my nonna's money on life, the good life. Um, that's what my understanding is. And that was a description that was given to my nonna. And I know that my nonna apparently had one illegitimate child in the good year. And the only reason I know that he's illegitimate because my mother told me that he looked like my nonno. Mm -hmm. Now my nonno was a farmer, and uh, he had a shekel down in the in the in the barn downstairs. And one particular year, he went out catching, you know, picking up your figurini. And during the times he was doing the figurini, um, he got a splinter in his eye. He got you know one of the prickly pears Ooh. in his eyes. So he went to see the doctor, and the doctor gave him the wrong medication. Mm. The eye drops actually burnt and killed off his eyes. It, it killed off his eye. So my oh. nonna only had one eye, yeah. And I remember that and I remember being a little girl and watching my nonna cry one day and he had tears out of his eye that was closed. So we had a permanently closed eye. I don't know very much about my nonna. He came here when I was a teenager and all I know is that he helped my mother grow up my little brother and um, he would go into the fields along Mary Creek and pick I Garduna. That's how I know Garduna. So he would pick them with his gloves, bring them to my mother, and we would fry off I Garduna. So I think understanding now about the foundlings and the time and the, the pressures and the mental health, I understand my nonna a little bit more. I understand why they said she was a simple woman, but when you give birth to 14 children and only three survive and your husband is a womanizer and you have to deal with those pressures and I'm wondering if she was depressed because I know she comes to me. So I want to honor her and I wonder whether she was depressed and she couldn't cope. And for her, her only mechanism was to withdraw. Yeah. And on the flip side of that is my nonno. And I wonder if his search quest for love and becoming a womanizer yeah. was because he was, you know, rejected, abandoned. That was his, that was his coping mechanism. Yeah. So I just through this story, I'm understanding more about their lives, and um, I'm just wondering whether, because I know my nonna, um, which is my 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 nonna's adopted mother was a very harsh woman because that's what my mother tells me. Oh, nonna Rosa era na terrible, era the best. So I'm wondering whether his coping mechanism of um, womanizing and having my nonna who's so depressed is what journey they took them. So I think this story is giving me another lens between. But he he didn't have they didn't have the tools that we have today on um dealing with things, you know. They, they didn't know how to suppress that anger. How did, you, how did they deal with that stuff? No, I they don't know. Have, they, so, didn't, they didn't have what we had. And yet, and yet, he might have been not a good husband, but he probably was a great grandfather. He was, you know, um, we, he was very good to my younger brother. Um, he was part of his life a deal a lot. He would feed him and look after him. So maybe that's his gap of the thing that he didn't do when my giving mother... Back, my giving back to society what he didn't have. What do you give yeah. back what you don't have? How can you give that? 
It's more like no. we have to really honour these people. They're the, the test of the human spirit on how they manage to have children, grandchildren, be a husband, be a wife, be a mother, when they never had any of that. No. My, my nonno is buried at the Reservoir Cemetery right now. So he came to Australia after my nonna died. He came here and he passed away in um, 1984. So he's buried at the Reservoir Cemetery. My nonna is buried on her own in Ligudia, not with her children or anybody else, but on her own. When I went to Ligudia in 2016, my uncle, who's my paternal uncle, who um, lives in Milledale, I said, I have to go and see my nonna and honour where my grandparents came from. And I was with my son and my uncle. And um, I arrive in this cemetery in Ligudia and I said, nonna, I don't know where you are, but please show me where you are. Do you know, I found her in three minutes. My son timed it, three minutes. And do you know my nonna, yeah, three minutes. My nonna is not buried on a grave with her name on it. My nonna is buried in a, in a mausoleum, you know those little mausoleum? Yeah. Um, with the La Familia La Rosa. And La Familia La Rosa was the town solicitor. He was a very wealthy man. And he's my Auntie Rosa Mazzola's or Palmieri's godfather. And he allowed my nonna to be buried there. My nonna, who was born of nobility, who died with nothing, whose money from her parents had been dispersed into, you know, into whatever you want to say my nonna did at that time or whatever, or whatever he could deal with. And probably working on the land is part of it. But I think finding her gave me closure. And I know she's always with me. All I know is that she was a very simple woman and um, who had to deal with difficult times. I'm sorry. I'm so emotional. I'm so sorry. No, you've got to be. That's, they, they, your, that's your family. Not only that, but I feel the people yeah. whose stories aren't told behind yeah, me. So we're honouring them all today and we're bringing them to the light. Dr Lucy, you wanted to say something? Uh, spend a word about your nonno. You know what, in my opinion, he's been always looking for to fill that void with love. Yeah. That yeah. was, you know, even uh, when you were saying, oh, he just uh, went and look, looked for women, to fill that void with love, the love he didn't have when he was a child. And my nonna, family, was still, you know? my nonna was so depressed about losing so many and so simple and probably had her own mental health problems. And how, how can you not when you've got four, you've given birth to 14 children and only three survived? And she was finding that boy too. She died young. So I have more respect for them now. Yeah. More respect for all the, all the, they did the best they could during the circumstances that, that they were thrown at they were, and they were, um, they, were, well, they were born in a time in an era where life wasn't kind and we complain about life today that's right so it's a way that we can sort of come together and say a mere skip in the park the challenges that we face today compared to what they faced but my nonna had my nonna and Nonna had another layer of, um, of discord. Not only was my Nonna a child of Filo de la Rota and not knowing and feeling love, I guess, by I'm assuming and making that assumption, but also my Nonna had to say goodbye to three of her children. She gave up three children, the youngest being 16, I think 16, to leave Sicily to come to a land, a land that she knew nothing about, mm -hmm. a land that would give her children hope and promise, a land that would give the generations to come hope and promise. So she had that extra layer. So not only did she struggle with giving up children, having her husband as a womanizer and coping with the mental health of that time, she also had that other layer of saying goodbye to her children. What's and her not name? What was her name, Lena? 
Angelina, Angelina. So she went through that Ganitzaro. So she went through that other layer of saying goodbye to her three children, the only three children she had left. Yeah. She said goodbye to them. We don't have modern technology that are, back then that allowed mm. us to Zoom and Skype. Yeah. We took letters that would take ages. So my, you know, for me right now, being a nonna, I feel that I can't see my grandson or can't see my children. But I can pick up the phone and FaceTime them. She couldn't do that. She yeah. would rely on a letter that would take maybe six months to come yeah. because you have to wait for the delay in response yeah. and what I, have you. I remember when my mum came from, from Sicily and she migrated mm -hmm. and then I went, we went back and I was 10 years old. I think my mum hadn't seen her mother and father for, I would say, probably 20 years. Oh, my God. She was 21 when she came. My mother, my mother they only went... Have, they didn't have phones in those days. It no. was a letter, as Lena's saying. It was just a letter. Or a telegram. When it's a telegram, you know something serious. And yeah. the other thing also, that the only thing also is, is I remember going back to Sicily the first time, or the only time when I was a young girl, in 1972, I think. And I went back with my mother and I went back with my brother. And I remember going into Ligudia um, and I went on my nonno shekel. Oh. So that was the only time my nonna got to meet us. So she only met us once in her whole Can you life. imagine what she would have felt to see you, to see her children's children? I mean, you know, you can, you've got this amount of love for your little Alessio and you've got this overwhelming, overpowering love. And when you see him, he, your, everything fades, everything in your life. And they but my nonna, my nonna wasn't like that. I think my nonna got to that stage in her life where she was blank. Yeah. She yeah. was lifeless. And yeah. she was so simple. And um, I understand her more. Yeah, I understand her more. Died. She died every time a child died. She died with them. She died. She died the day, you know, her husband was... You know, a womanizer. She died the day when she gave birth to children that didn't live. She died the day when she gave said goodbye to her children. She, yeah. and I think that's what drives me. I think she drives me. She sits behind me and drives me to um. Many, to be the many, woman you are. She's your mentor. Many, many, yeah. many chapters. Um. I don't know if that's why I'm so attached to Sicily to understand them and where they've come from. So I understand more about myself and so that my grandchildren and my children understand more about our journey. Yeah. I don't know if that's the answer about why I'm so motivated, but I do know one thing that I, because of you, Lucia and you, Carmela, I understand my grandparents, sorry. I understand my grandparents more. And I understand their story more. And that's probably, um, that's evolution, I guess. Yeah, but I guess you being, I, being connected with Sicily, it's your way of staying connected with them. We all yeah, share that, that love for Sicily. That's what keeps us connected because you, you're lucky your mum's still alive and your auntie, you've got those people that are still alive. For me, all of them are all gone. And for me, it's like every time I go back to Sicily, I'm home. I'm waiting to go back to Sicily. I want to take my mother with me and my aunt. My mother doesn't want to go back. She says I have bad memories of Sicily. Oh, poor <laughs> thing. Who knows what <laughs> she <laughs> went through. And I said, Ma, I, I need to go back. I, I feel home. And I don't know whether it's the home with my grandparents on my back. Um, I know my nonna on my on my on my dad's side, my, my paternal side, she was a tough woman. Her name was Nicolina Messina, right? Nicolina Castro, and I'm named after her. She was a tough woman. My nonno was a, an abuser, and I had no idea he abused my nonno physically. But my nonno was different. She had 10 children alive. 
So that's the contrasting where you've got the death and then you've got the ones that are alive. So my nonna, she was tough. She reared her children. She came to Australia. She was a really tough woman, contrasting differentials between my maternal and my paternal nonna. But I respect them both the same. I respect where they've come from, what they've taught me in a roundabout way. Although I remember going to see my nonna in 1990, because I remember going to Sicily in 1990 as well. And um, I walked in the door and she was mopping. Il pavamento, lavavo pavamento. E l'ho guardato, ha detto, oh my God, it's my father. I looked at my nonna and I, it was like seeing my father. My father was still alive then. And I was so emotional because my nonna was my father. And it, she represented my father and his life. Because my nonna gave up and said to my father, Tu di ca di militello deve andare. Because my, grand, my father had people around him that were not only killed by the mafia because of the time, they were um, getting involved in dealings and being put into jail. My nonna goes, Tu te ne gira l'Argentina, a, a, a Venezuela. Deve lavorare de la, so, in the salt mines in Venezuela. Not qua, perché tu non devi fare questa vita. So that's the story of my understanding more about my grandparents. And I hope everybody that listens to it, everybody that understands the trials and the tribulations of any of their parents, where they come from, regardless of what part of Italy or the world they come from, understand who they are so that you can understand more about yourselves and yep. your journey. Because I think it's part of your healing and you might not want to know that, but that's okay. There's no right or wrong. It's whatever you make of it and whatever story you want to create. But this journey has brought me more than you can ever imagine. So I just want to say thank you very much, ladies, for sharing that and being part of my life to understand more about the Sicilian blood I have and the maternal and my paternal grandparents. So I want to say thank you. Thank you. Dr. Lucy, you want to say something? Yeah. Um, this candle for me is from in memory of the kids um, of the past, of course, the many foundlings I read the stories about, but also I want to um, think of this scandal for the kids who nowadays are without parents yeah and they're looking for a family there are oh. many many kids around us um in poor countries or even here in australia you know looking for a family but unfortunately because of the very strict laws couples who for example cannot have children and would like to have a child in their families are not able because of a question of money, because of the longer bureaucracy, this and that, to give hope and a family and love to these children who are in need of love. The foundlings we have nowadays are waiting for families to give love to them. But unfortunately, there are so many people who are not able because of the bureaucracy, because of the money, to give love to these children. So this is a candle of hope that things um, will be better for these children and for this couple who cannot have children but are full of love to give to these uh, um, children in need. Yeah, yeah. All right, my candle, it's not a big one, but my candle is for all the pain, all the emotional, mental, physical pain that each one of them went through. May it be brought to the light, refined by the fire, and may peace dwell in the fibres of every generation, in every child, in every grandchild that is a product of those, of the people, of the foundlings, and may peace, love, harmony, trust, and hope also enter into their lives. 
and may the fire just refine all that pain. And may God, who is the king of the universe, look after each one of them in Jesus' name. Amen. Rest in peace. Yes. Grazie, ragazze. Thank, Thank you, you very so much, much everybody. I think we're done. We're done. Thank you, everybody, for listening to this episode. Uh, let us know what you think. Uh, we're very honoured with Dr. Lucy Barbera. If you need anything, um, if you're happy to uh, email her, it was on the last screen. Uh, I think it's lucia82 at gmail.com. At gmail.com, yes. Please That's feel it. free to make contact with me if you need to ask anything. I'm uh, really happy to be able to reply to you. Thank you, everybody, and right. make peace, Thank love, and light continue with everybody in our life. Even through this COVID time, we still I do have a good life. It is yeah, tough, that's right. but we still do have a good life. Count our blessings, they say. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Take care. Bye. Stay well and safe. Ciao. Ciao.